Spotify. We'll be streaming live soon. Well, praise the Lord. This is the day that God has made, and we've come to rejoice and be glad in it. What does it mean to follow Jesus? What does it mean to follow Jesus? Well, we look at, first of all, in Matthew chapter 19, verses 1 and 2. Matthew 19, 1 and 2. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these sayings, you know, Jesus is always talking, always teaching, always ministering to people. When Jesus had finished these sayings that he departed from Galilee, he had been uh, talking about uh, different parables, now he's departed from Galilee and came to the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. And great multitudes followed him. Great multitudes followed him. They were always seeing what Jesus was doing, always hearing what he was saying. And they were always interested in following Jesus. They wanted to know him and to know what's going on. And multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. So when they followed Jesus, they were healed. When we follow Jesus, we will receive his healing also for us. In Mark chapter 10, verse 21, Mark chapter 10 Verse 21, Jesus had been speaking to this uh, rich man. And he, Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up your cross, and follow me. Sell everything that you have. Take up your cross and follow me. So what does it mean to follow Jesus? Well, here is saying that we need to take up our cross, which means I need to die to what I want, die to what I want, die to myself and, my, and sacrifice my life for others. I need to give all that up. But actually, what does this word mean? Uh, mean to follow? Well, if you look it up in the dictionary, that's a good place to follow, <laughs> to find a definition, in it? It means to accompany. It means to go along with. It means to go the same way with. So to follow Jesus means so we will accompany and go along with Jesus the same way he is going. We're going to go with Jesus. We're going to follow him. We're going to go the way he's going. And we're going to do what he's doing. So what does it really mean to follow Jesus? To follow Jesus. Now, let's look at some... Uh, definitions for that. We're going to look at five definitions of what it means to really follow Jesus. So let's get into that. I don't know about you, but I want to follow Jesus. I want to, I want to follow him. He's the only person worth it. <laughs> to follow, first of all, to follow G after Jesus is you're very determined and have a purposeful manner you're very determined and you have a purpose. Your mind is set on the purpose to follow him just as the two blind men. You remember those two blind men over in Matthew chapter 9? Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 through 30. Let's look at that just for a moment. Matthew 9, 27 through 30. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him. They followed him. 
crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the two blind men came to him, kept on following him where he was going. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They never did ask about healing. Jesus already knew what they needed. But do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said to him, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly warned them saying, see that no one knows it. So they followed him. They were determined to get after Jesus. They had a determination. They had a purpose in following him. They wanted to be healed. They wanted to see. So the first thing we need to understand that to follow Jesus, we have a determination to do that. We're going to go after him and we're going to go after him with a purpose in mind to follow him and to do what he wants. All right? You understand that? That's you you got to have a determine you got to be determined that you're going to do that. All right, next thing is to follow after Jesus means to totally pursue Jesus. Just as uh, Paul the apostle wrote to the church at 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 Corinth to follow to follow love. Remember that in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Just very simple. Now, you remember this. You don't even have to look at it. It see, said, pursue love. Pursue love. He'd been talking about the gifts of the Spirit. He'd been talking about what it means to, uh, to have love, what love is all about. And therefore, he was telling the church at Corinth, pursue love. What kind of love? God's love. Agape love. So what does it mean to pursue? It means to seek, to obtain over a long period. In other words, it's not going to come overnight. To follow Jesus means to totally pursue, means to totally seek him, to obtain from him what you need in your life over a long period of time. Or what you need to understand what his will is for your life, to pursue that, to go after him. In other words, when I went to school to get a, a Master of Divinity at Oral Roberts University, it didn't happen overnight. It took three years of studying, learning, getting it inside of me, preparing me for ministry. Three years. And then later on, God wanted me to get a doctorate degree. And I did that at home through a, the court, uh, through a school in Jacksonville. It took four years to, to not only be a pastor of a church, but also to, to study hard, to get after it, to make sure that I'm going to obtain that doctorate degree that God wanted me to have. I'm going to pursue it. I am going to seek it. It's going to take some time, but I'm going to go after it. And that's what it means to follow Jesus. means that we need to totally pursue him. Pursue him. Get after him. And it's going to take some time for what he has for us in our lives to be able to come in and to impart within us what he wants us to have. It's not going to happen overnight. How long did it take the disciples? Took them three years. Three years of them following Jesus, him pouring his life into them, preparing them for ministry. So to follow Jesus, first of all, means that we are determined. I mean, I am determined. Nothing's going to stop me whatsoever. God called me to be a pastor. 
and I was determined I'm going to go after that. I had, I'm going to go out there. I got a purpose in mind. I'm going to follow Jesus. He's taken me to be a pastor. I was determined. And to totally pursue Jesus, meaning I'm going to seek after him to obtain everything he wants me to have. I It's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. Got that? Those are the first three things, to follow Jesus. Next. To follow Jesus means to intentionally study the life, deeds, actions, and thoughts of Jesus and attempt to fully understand him and to replicate. In other words, to become an exact copy of his way of thinking in our life. Yeah, oh, let me go through that again. To follow Jesus it means to intentionally study his life, what he does, how he acts, what how he thinks, in an attempt to fully understand him, and then to become an exact copy of his way of thinking in my life. Turn to Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians. Paul writing to the church at Thessalonica, 2 Thessalonians. I believe I've got it here somewhere in my Bible. You got it in yours? 2 Thessalonians uh, 3. I got a second. All right, I'm getting there. 2 Thessalonians 3, 6 and 7. Paul the apostle writing to the church at Thessalonica, he says, but we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us. In other words, get away from those who are not doing right. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us for we were not disorderly among you. In other words, you've seen us, you've seen how I function within your midst. And, and those that have come to, to be an example of what to do, you've, you've followed us. And because you knew how we function, you knew how we thought, we knew you knew how what, what we needed to do in the church. So follow us. We need to think like Jesus. I've, been, I've read a book and I'm, I'm studying it even more. It's called Think Like Jesus. Now, why do we need to do that? We need to think like Jesus because the way we think doesn't always line up with the way God thinks. So we need to learn how to think like Jesus. How did he work? How did he act? What did he do to minister to people? We need to think like him. When we do that, then we become more like him and to follow what he wants us to do because people need to see Jesus, don't they? They don't need to see us. They don't need to see Frank. They need to see Jesus. So we need to think like Jesus in order to do the same works, which leads us to the next meaning to follow. What? So first of all, what a bit? Be determined. Have a purpose in mind. Totally pursue after Jesus. Get after him. Intentionally study his life, way he acts and thinks to become an exact copy of him, a copy of him. So we need to do this, which leads us to the next meaning to follow Jesus. It means that we need to imitate Jesus or to do and say what we see him saying or doing. Yes, 
We are to imitate Jesus. We are Jesus upon this face of this earth. So whatever we say and do should be what Jesus would say and do. Over in Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Paul, the apostle writing at the church at Ephesus, said, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. <laughs> Imitate Jesus. Imitate him. Be an imitator of him. Be an imitator of him. In Psalm 33, 9, is. It says that God spoke and it was done. God spoke and it was done. Jesus said in John 14, 12, that we are to do the same works that he did and even greater works that he did. Well, how did Jesus do the works of God? How did he do the, the miracles that took place? Did he have a lengthy prayer over what was people's needs. Let's sit down and pray for the next 10, 15 minutes. We're going to get this off. No, he spoke it and it was done. He spoke it and it was done. The power of his word caused something to happen. How did God create this universe? He spoke it and it was done. So we need to be imitators of God. Imitate what Jesus would do and say over in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Oh, uh, yeah. Matthew chapter 8. Let's see. Matthew 8. I'm got I'm getting there. You getting there? Matthew 8. Here in Matthew chapter 8, we have this uh, centurion came to him pleading for his servant. It was sick. And the centurion said to Jesus, after Jesus said, Listen, I'll come to your house and we'll heal him. But the centurion said, Listen. Only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Only speak a word. Speak it and it's done. So, over in verse 13, Jesus said to Centurion, Go your way as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. And Jesus said, okay, let, let, let's pray right here now before you go back home. No, he said, you've already believed and be it done unto you and it's done. He spoke it. He said it and it took place. So to follow Jesus means that we need to be determined, have a purpose in mind. We need to totally pursue after Jesus. Hallelujah. It's going to take time, but we're going to go after him. We need, to, we need to intentionally study his life, the way he acts, the way he does things, the way he, the way he thinks, because we want to function like him, because we are to imitate Jesus. We are to imitate Jesus and what he does and what he says. Jesus said we're going to do the same thing he did, and even greater things we shall do. How did he do it? He said it, and it took place. So, last but not least, to follow Jesus means that we go where he goes to minister. Oh, yes. Where am I? Now, I'm going to follow Jesus. Where am I to go? Uh, Matthew chapter 4. Verses 18 and following, Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, 
and they were fishermen. And then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. <laughs> gave it up, gave up their profession and followed after Jesus. Then immediately going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee and John, his brother, in a boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. So in order to be able to follow Jesus, to go and minister, we've got to make a decision to do that. You've got to make a decision to do that. It's a total commitment of your life to go follow Jesus. Follow after him. Follow after him. Remember we talked about this uh, rich man. This rich man had all these, had all this money. And he said, listen, I've done all the commandments. I'm a good guy. And Jesus said, there's one thing that you lack. Oh, remember back in Mark 12, Mark 10? He said, now, one thing you lack. I want you to go sell everything, give it to the poor, take up your cross and follow me. In other words, give up all, give up all your money. You don't need that anymore. And come and follow me. He told the disciples, leave your, leave your job. Leave your family. Come follow me. Now, how, how can I do that? My family is important to me. Yeah, I'm, I've got a job. Maybe he wanted to leave your job. Maybe he wants you to stay on the job and minister. You got to know where he wants you to be, where he wants to take you. You, you are to follow him, not to follow what you want, but to follow what he wants. When you do that, when you totally just say, okay, my job is not important. When I was at Old Roberts University, that's one thing I remember that they did. They taught people to go into a profession and be a minister for Jesus. It wasn't a job. It was a ministry to other people. So that's what it needs to take place. A ministry to other people, you're total, totally committed to him. Nothing else matters. You Now, when you do that, in Mark chapter 10, Jesus said, But surely I say to you, as no one who's left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake and the gospel's, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands and with persecution and the age to come eternal life. So Jesus said, now you make this total commitment to me to follow me. When you do that, when you put me over and above your family, over and above your job, over and above the money that you have, over and above everything in your life, and you put me over and above all the things that are in you, in your life, in this natural life, when you do that, die to self, die to what you want, and follow me, then you'll be totally blessed. And you'll be totally blessed. Jesus will tell you where to go. In Mark chapter 1, he'll tell you what to do, where to do it. Mark chapter 1, with verse 35. Now in the morning, having arisen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him, and they said to him, everyone is looking for you. But he said to them, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also, because for this purpose I have come forth. 
and he was preaching in the synagogues throughout Galilee and casting out demons. He said, I know people are looking for me, but I've been praying to my father, and my father's saying, now we need to move on, go into other towns. Jesus will show you where to go. He showed me where to go. He showed me I was to come back to Sandersville and to minister here. You're to follow Jesus. You're to go where he wants you to go. So in summary, ah, in summary, let me read this. It's very important now. Therefore, to follow Jesus is to be determined and purpose, purposefully go after Jesus in hot pursuit to study how he operates and thinks so you can fully understand him, so you can act and think like him in order to go where he, where with him, wherever he goes to minister to people in need. When you truly follow Jesus in his ministry, when you truly follow him, determined, pursuing him, hot pursuit after him, wanting to follow him wherever he goes. When you truly follow Jesus in his ministry, you will be healed by him. You see, he's going to take care of everything physical that you need. You don't need to worry about that. When I moved to Sandersville, I didn't have to worry about a house. He showed me which one to get. He showed me, he already, he, it already provided the money to fix it up. Everything was provided. You lack nothing when you follow Jesus. And when you do so, he keeps you healthy so that you can follow him. <laughs> it's almost that simple, but you've got to make a decision to follow Jesus to follow Jesus totally, giving your life totally to him, no matter what. When you do that, you're walking on his pathway, walking the way he wants to walk, thinking like him, doing what he does, and all the physical needs that you have are taken care of. So today, today, right now, don't wait till the next, don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till after you hear this. Make it right now. Jesus, I'm going to follow you. I don't know what that fully means, but I'm going to follow you. I'm going to give my life to you, Jesus. I'm going to give it up. I'm going to give it up. And I'm going to follow after you. Wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do or say, I'm going to do that. Because you're my Lord and Savior. So I speak over you the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to follow him. You are empowered to be like him on this earth. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.